Hello everyone. Welcome to you on my channel, I am currently serving in oil and gas sector and having an experience over 20 years in the field. Preparing different types of analysis and reports using different tools. My today's video is in continuation to the gap analysis tools, today we will learn about the fifth tool Nadler Tushman's congruence model in detail. I have collected the data through research from of different resources, like books, documents, research papers and website to make it more comprehensive for you to watch my video. In gap analysis video only brief information provided now we are going to learn in detail. Please watch video till end for clear understanding. You can watch my videos on my channel Think Future Academy and Resource of Educational Development separately, you can find the link below in description of this video. In this video today we will cover the following content. Number 1. Introduction about the model. Number 2. What is Nadler Tushman's congruence model? Number 3. Elements of the congruence model. Number 4. Explanation of elements of the congruence model. Number 5. Why the four elements? Number 6. Applying the congruence model. Number 7. Advantages and disadvantages. Number 8. What's good about the model? Number 9. What's bad about the model? Number 10. Building and maintaining model. Number 11. Implementation of model. Number 12. Conclusion. Number 13. Helpful tips. Number 14. Resources. Number 15. Feedback. There are six gap analysis tools to identify and close the gaps in business, once we have identified what the gaps are, we need to look into why they exist and what we can do about them. Gap analysis tools you can use are as follows. We already learned about the McKinsey 7s, SWOT analysis, fishbone analysis and pestel analysis video already available on my channel. Today we will learn the fifth tool which is Nadler Tushman's congruence model. And the last tools model Berklitwin causal model will be prepared in my upcoming video. Introduction of the model. The critical first step in designing and leading successful large-scale change is to understand the dynamics and performance of the enterprise fully. Leaders need a comprehensive road map for understanding performance issues in today's complex enterprises. The congruence model of organizational behavior developed by David Nadler and Michael Tushman at Columbia University is a simple, pragmatic approach to organization dynamics based on systems thinking. Four key elements determine how work happens are follows. Element 1. The work itself. Element 2. The people who perform the work. Element 3. Formal organizational structure. Element 4. Culture and Operating Environment What is Nadler Tushman's Congruence Model? The Nadler Tushman Congruence Model is a diagnostic tool for organizations that evaluates how well the various elements within these organizations work together. The result is the identification of performance gaps. These gaps have to be closed in order to improve the organization's productivity and profitability. The gaps are identified because the Nadler Tushman congruence model looks at the way the company processes information and input from both internal and external sources. Furthermore, it analyzes communication structures to make them process the information as effectively as possible. Here we will review and the element of the model. If a change impacts one area, it will have a domino effect on the other areas. Which is why this model can correctly apply to change situations. The model, in summary, looks at four factors that allow transforming inputs into outputs. As a leader, if you want to achieve the desired output, you, therefore, need to understand how the four critical components work in conjunction. Let's see the element. Element 1. Task. Element 2. People slash individual. Element 3. Organizational structure or formal organization. Element 4. Culture or informal organization. In explanation of elements of the congruence model my colleague Ms. Jasmine will help us to explain the elements for you one by one. 
she has vast experience in the field of leadership management and excellence. Thanks Mr. Aziz for inviting me to join you, I will try to explain as my best of knowledge, so let's start from. First element which is task. This task identifiable as work, refers to the tasks carried out by employees. As an organization, we should ensure that the tasks are consistent with the objectives set for organization. It should be visible, what skills and knowledge are required for each task. And these should be present in the organization in the right quantity. We should look at certain questions while conducting the analysis like. Question 1, what are the tasks or processes being carried out regularly? Question 2, what steps are being taken to maximize task efficiency and efficacy? Question 3. Is the work meaningful or fulfilling and if not, what are the challenges in making it so? Now we will move to the second element which is people or individual. These are the people in the organization, and composes a critical element of the congruence model. We should be aware of the type of individuals an organization is formed of, their working styles, competencies, and skills, as well as their personal characteristics. The following questions should be considered. Question 1. Do the employees possess the requisite skills or knowledge? Question 2. Does the business tend to hire staff with a certain personality type? Question 3. Are they suitably compensated? These questions must be asked of every employee, from upper management to process workers. Now we will discuss the third element which is organizational structure or formal organization. This is the formal aspect of the organization, which includes policies, procedures, processes, and all business systems. The following questions also considered. Question 1. How to create consistency between what an organization wants and what it does? Question 2. How many levels of management are there between executives and employees? Question 3. To what extent are decision-making capabilities assigned? Here, it is also helpful to consider the physical structure how many business units are there? Question 4. Are divisions product, region, or function based? Question 5. Are they centrally located or do they occupy several locations? Now we will discuss the last element culture or informal organization. This is the softer aspect of the organization and includes the characteristics that we would typically link to the culture of the organization. Culture is the hardest categories to define and category is most critical to success. Culture refers to tangible aspects such as values, vision, and leadership style. But it also includes intangible aspects of employee management relations. We should look at certain questions like. Question 1. How much trust do the employees have in management? Question 2. What level of engagement or support is offered to decision makers? Question 3. Are the ethics of management expectations sound? From there onward Mr. Aziz will explain you why the four elements are important for the model. Thank you Ms. Jasmine, now I will explain why four elements are important for model. Actually. The model is based on the idea that for an organization, business, or team to be successful, the work that forms the core of the organization's performance, the people who are responsible for this work, the structure of the organization, and the culture of the organization need to fit together or to be congruent. The basic premise of the Nadler-Tushman congruence model is consistent with the basic premise of the open systems theory. The more congruent these four elements are, the better the performance of the organization and the faster to achieves its goals. When there is inconsistency or incongruence between these four elements, problems arise, leading to low performance of the organization. The Nadler-Tushman congruence model focuses on these four elements because they are the means through which an organization converts its inputs, such as strategy, resources, environment, and history, into outputs such as goods and services. To apply the congruence model, we will look at each component and then analyze how they relate to one another. In step 1 we will analyze each element, let's start. Step 1 Element 1. Work. Start by looking at the critical tasks that underpin your organization's performance, 
from two perspectives, what work is done, and how it is processed. Consider what skills or knowledge individual tasks require, whether they are mechanical or creative, and how the work flows. Identify approaches that work best, for example, quick, thorough, empathic, analytical, precise, or enthusiastic, and what the stresses and rewards of the work are. Step 1 Element 2 People, look at who interacts to get these tasks done, bosses, peers, and external stakeholders, for example. Identify the skills, knowledge, experience, and education that they possess. Then, explore how they like to be compensated, rewarded, and recognized for their work. Also, consider how committed they are to the organization, and what career progression expectations they have. Step 1 Element 3 Organizational Structure Map your organization's structures, systems, and processes. Are there distinct business units or divisions, for example, regional, functional, or product or market specific? Are there different levels or ranks, or does it have a flat structure? And how distinct or rigid are the reporting lines? Also, consider how standardized work is within your organization, and look at the rules, policies, procedures, measures, incentive schemes, and rewards that govern it. Step 1 Element 4 Culture, this is often the element with the greatest influence, but the hardest one to analyze. You can explore your organization's culture by considering the leadership style and the beliefs and values of the individuals who work there. Think about the unwritten rules that define how work really gets done. These stem from people's attitudes, beliefs, values, behavior, and so on, and from the processes and structures that you've already examined. Look at how information flows around the organization, and whether there are any political networks in play. Now we will go through the step 2 here we will analyze the relationships between the elements, and organize the four elements into the following six pairs, and analyze how they interrelate. Step 2 Element 1 Work and people, is the work being done by the most able and skilled people? Does the work meet individuals' needs? Step 2 Element 2 Work and structure, is work done in a well-coordinated manner, given the organizational structure in place? Is that structure sufficient to meet the demands of the work being done? Step 2 Element 3 Structure and people, does the formal organization structure allow the people to work together effectively? Does it meet people's needs? Are people's perceptions of the formal structure clear or distorted? Step 2 Element 4 People and Culture Are the people working within a culture that best suits them? Does the culture make use of people's own resources? Step 2 Element 5 Culture and Work Does the culture help or hinder work performance? Step 2 Element 6 Structure and Culture do the culture and the organizational structure complement one another, or do they compete? As we are work through these pairs to identify areas of congruence and incongruence, and consider how your organization's performance measures against its goals. The above elements and questions are very important to answer. Step 3, Build and Sustain Congruence, Now, consider what steps you could take to reconfigure each element, and resolve the incompatibilities that you've identified. As you identify solutions and move forward with them, don't forget to look at how you could strengthen the things that are already well coordinated. It's as important to reinforce and sustain what is already congruent as it is to fix what's incongruent. According to the model, the best strategies for fixing incongruence will be those that reflect the unique character of your team or organization, and the environment that you operate in. This is why one organization can thrive on a certain structure or type of work, while another apparently similar one struggles to make a profit. Now we will discuss the advantages of the model. The congruence model provides a rigorous framework for analyzing complex organizational problems. The model does not place restrictions on managers, according to management consulting firm Oliver Wyman. It is a tool for thinking through organizational problems, not a rigid template for classifying observations. 
it does not specify a particular approach for designing organizational structures or processes as long as there is a fit between the various components. The model helps companies think through the impact of change management on organizational interactions and performance. The social components people and informal structures and technical components tasks and formal structures must fit as part of the congruence model. For example, if the product manager is not on speaking terms with the marketing manager, there could be design delays and poor market penetration. Here we will discuss the disadvantages of model. Applying the congruence model could be a long and expensive process, especially for global organizations with several business units and thousands of employees. The model does not specify a direct way for incorporating group dynamics into organizational analysis. The absence of a structured template, while giving managers flexibility, might also limit their ability in quickly coming up with proven solutions to organizational problems. The application of this model may exclude the possibility that the absence of a fit does not necessarily imply a problem because there may not always be a perfect fit between tasks and individuals, especially in small entrepreneurial companies. However, this should not limit effectiveness because companies have to adapt continually to changes. For example, training and mentoring programs could bring new employees up to speed on new responsibilities. Now we are looking at model feature, what's good about the model? The congruence model is a framework conceptually similar to McKinsey's 7S, as it looks at giving a holistic picture of the components of the organization that can affect a change. It has the advantage of being a bit simpler in the definition of its components. Still, above all, it introduces a very typical concept of systems theory which is the feedback from the organization to external input. Whereas the McKinsey's framework is typically a static model, you identify an as is, and maybe a to be, this model is based on the effects that the congruence model has on a change initiative. As such, it can also be used during the change process. What's bad about the model? It is still complicated, especially in the definition of the components. Moreover, it requires a level of abstraction and detail that is not always easy to achieve in traditional organizations. Which means that external support is needed. Building and maintaining model. The basic premise of the nadler tushman congruence model is that a business can only achieve high performance when the four categories are congruent. In other words, categories only reach congruence if decision makers reach their desired output. At this stage of the process, caution must be exercised. A single change that is made to one category pair may negatively impact one or more other pairs. As a result, each incongruence should be analyzed in detail to identify gaps and adjust where necessary. It is important to note that Nadler and Tushman's model does not provide a means of solving congruency problems. Decision makers will need to choose a third-party diagnostic tool specific to the category pair where the incongruence exists. Let's review now implementation of model. The implementation of the congruence model involves identifying the symptoms of problems, determining the gaps between inputs and outputs, describing the fit between an organization's components, identifying problem areas and developing an action plan to deal with these problems. Conclusion of the model. The congruence model is an excellent concept and a way to illustrate how an organization should be considered a living organism. This framework allows us to consider the fuller picture of change and not just the input or output approach. Great as a diagnostic tool, it still does not provide full guidance on how to conduct a change process, this still needs the support of other tools. Please consider these helpful tips while you are in process of analysis. Tip 1. The nadler tushman congruence model is a performance evaluation tool based on the degree of congruence between four key categories, task, people, structure, and culture. Tip 2. Nadler and Tushman argue that high performance in a business is contingent on all four categories being congruent. All inputs must contribute to a desired final output. Tip 3. The Nadler-Tushman congruence model identifies incongruences but provides no support in addressing them. Decision makers must use specific diagnostic tools to complete the whole process.
feedback. I hope you enjoyed this video and before leaving, if you have not already subscribed this channel, make sure to subscribe, like and hit the bell icon to get updates when I post new videos. Provide your feedback in comments. Join social media on following links.